When our best fur friends leave our world, many of us are left wanting one last scritch, one last hug, one last walk together. One Last Network is a space for pet guardians to honor their pets in their senior years and to cope with the days leading up to and after their passing. Here's your host, Angela Schneider, founder of One Last Network and Big White Dog Photography in Spokane, Washington. today with Lori Blomer. She is a psychic medium and pet psychic. And I actually first met Lori in 2015. She traveled from Pennsylvania to Massachusetts to do an animal communication workshop at one of our animal rescues. And ever since then, I've been fascinated by what she does. And I've done other workshops with her. I've had readings done by her for both myself and my dog, Coda. And I'm excited that she's here with us today. So thank you so much, Laura, for being here and chatting with us today. And um, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so excited about this. And Darlene, I want to say just thank you. It's really a great opportunity. And I'm really excited about the whole, this whole initiative that you and your friends are coming together. I think anything that helps us better understand animals' worlds, animals' challenges, and has it, to helps us develop a sense of empathy for them uh, is a beautiful thing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the more resources out there and people we can reach out to, it makes everything so much easier for us with pets who are getting older and going through that phase of life. So I appreciate you being here and chatting with us. And um, first, I'd just like for you to tell us a little bit about you and who, who Lori is. So who is Lori? Um, let's see here. So I've been doing this work professionally for the past 11 years, I left the corporate world where I was in human resources for about 25 years. I basically waited till I had the courage <laughs> to make that big jump. And that cycle of my life, which was very fulfilling in its own way, felt complete. But um, as far as my psychic ability is concerned, um, that is something that showed up very early on in my life. And as far as communicating with animals concerned is concerned, that too showed up early in my life. In fact, I can remember being very little and sort of understanding what my cat's point of view and opinion was on things and realizing slowly that not everybody else realized animals had thoughts and feelings about things or, or at least understood them. So um, it, I left my corporate role. Again, that cycle felt complete, but I just really felt drawn to help people um, connect with a bigger picture of themselves, um, spiritually, if you will, but also a big part of my work is animal communication. And that to me kind of feels like part of my calling to help animals and to uh, make, they are, their quality of life is so dependent upon us as human beings. I thought anything I can do to help bridge that gap and helping us understand them and also helping them understand us because humans are kind of crazy in their eyes. Uh, totally would be a beautiful we thing. Are. Yeah. So the and I I when I was working in human resources, I actually did a lot of training and development. So I liked teaching. And the first okay. class out the door for me as a professional psychic was on animal communication because I really felt this is important. This is timely. People need to understand this. So um, that's a very little bit about me. Uh, my title as psychic channel animal communicator. The psychic part is that I'm able to kind of tune intuitively to people's backstories, if you will. Um, that's sort of that sixth sense, as many people might call it. I also, um, as a channel or medium, um, I also communicate with folks in spirit and I communicate with animals who have passed too. And I also communicate with other folks up there, such as 
guardian angels. We all have a team. Animals have a team too. So when I do animal communication, for example, I invite your people, so to speak. I invite their people and I invite my people. And I basically have a big conversation here and they help me get the big picture on what's going on and also give me more information on the nature of the relationship between the human and the animal. Because um, any of the significant relationships we have in our lives are to a degree preordained by our own souls deciding we want to work together. So there's always the big picture. And that informs me on how to help sort of the little picture of what's going on here and now when people contact me to get help with their animals. So that's a little bit about me. I don't know if there's anything else you want me to expand on. I'd be happy to. No, no, I love that. I love that. And when speaking with people and their animals and learning about their animals, you actually do this both virtually and in person. Mm -hmm. And as I understand, you use a photo if it's done virtually to kind of communicate with that animal. I do. And I'm glad you brought that up. I have clients at this point all over the world. So many, many of them, we are working over video conference. Um, for me, since it's really an energetic process, it's telepathy, if you will. Um, it doesn't matter if they're in person or not. So okay. that gives me that flexibility. But the animal's picture helps me connect with them energetically. In fact, whenever possible, I'll spend several minutes before a call or a meeting um, to just tune in and I'll sort of do a body scan, see if anything stands out to me about the body. <clears throat> I usually get a sense of what their personality is like. And, and often if this is an animal who's passed, they will give me an idea of what they were suffering from that led to their demise, whether it's the decision to help them pass on the part of a human or the animal themselves passed on their own. So I try and get a little bit of backstory, but I absolutely do that during the reading, even if I didn't have any advance of the picture. Um, I prefer to work with pictures, frankly. When I first started working professionally, people would ask me to meet with their animals and we were such a distraction to each other. Yes. I can remember going to a friend's house and their dog sitting in front of me and it's like, the mailman comes by at this time. And I like trucks and that car makes that noise and here are my toys and here's where I sleep and here's my food and blah, 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 blah. I had so much to So true, so the dog takes else. over. <laughs> yeah, it was just very chatty. So it's a little bit easier actually for me to be at a distance. So I, I should say the animal doesn't have to be with either of us for me to communicate with them. So if you're sitting in your car and I'm in my office and the dog's at home, I can still have that connection. Okay, I love that. And when looking at a picture, if someone were to send a picture, is there a certain type of picture meaning? And I'm all about expression and dogs. So if this, do you want to see a picture of the dog in a happy moment? Does it matter? It just, or does just that whole communication kind of take over where you get that feeling and you're able to connect no matter what? That is a great question. And it's something you have to kind of get past <clears throat> um, because it can be, pictures can be misleading, right? Yes. <laughs> and um, right. They're not a puppy anymore. They don't weigh five pounds. They weigh right. 75 pounds. So I take a look at the picture and I almost sort of blur my eyes slightly. And I tune in for lack of a better way to put this to the essence of that animal. And okay. I can often discern from the picture for that matter. Are they still in this plane or have they passed? Because energetically they'll feel different. And I've taken classes on animal communication, and this is something I've worked on. I, it's, I, if it sounds like I'm talking in sort of somewhat vague terms, it's a very, very yeah. subtle process. I'm actually mm -hmm. taking a class right now on doing as a psychic private investigator, and we're working with pictures to decide, first of all, is the person alive or dead? And then we work oh, with a wow. picture to get a sense for if the person's past or alive, where are they? What are the surroundings? So it's amazing how a picture can actually oh. serve as a proxy or a surrogate for the actual person themselves, at least from a psychic's point of view. Pictures are really powerful. So the short answer to your question is it doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, I like to get a good look at them. So if they're way in the distance in a field and they're about this, right. you know, teeny tiny, I like something that's relatively close up, but it doesn't have to be a current one. Okay. Um, but I would tell a person uh, if, if at all possible, send one that sort of is, you know, gives me just a good sort of front image of the, so I can see their face, get a pretty good okay. view of their body, but that's all. I can work with just about anything, frankly. And okay. I should also add a, a picture is not required for this process at all. Really? Okay. Yeah, it's helpful. It's extremely helpful, but sometimes we just don't have a picture available and I, I can still, I can still work. Okay. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Um, so how about pets who are going through some type of illness? How can you help those pet parents? If someone to reach out, someone were to reach out to you and maybe the dog or the animals diagnosed with something, um, how can you help with that? It would still be sending a picture and then kind of communicating and then you might get a, a vibe with that. I, um, 
as a psychic, most psychics would play the don't feed the psychic game, meaning they yeah. don't want to know anything. When I am yes. working with animals, especially problem solving, a little bit okay. of information helps. So I, and I also tell people I'm not what they call a medical intuitive. So right. I don't diagnose, um, you know, I don't get into medical stuff. I always defer to <clears throat> experts, veterinarians, mm -hmm. for example. So if a person has a diagnosis on the pet, and I will also ask them, are they taking medications? Is there a treatment plan? Um, okay. All these things was, can potentially impact the impact of the animal's point of view. Um, so I do ask a few questions up front about them. But where someone like me can be helpful is to get a sense for how is that animal feeling? You know, what, what do they want? And I can ask, how's that, medic how's that medicine sitting with them? Okay. So... For example, I, I remember a dog showing me, I, I knew I, intuitively, I understood that it was something like prednisone. It was, a, I could tell. Okay. And I said, I feel like there's something with animals on something that I would call like prednisone, a steroid, and it's making this animal agitated. What are you seeing by way of behavior? And she said, he's panting, he's drinking tons of water. He just walks in circles. And I said, you might want to talk to your vet about that. It does not seem to agree with him. So I, again, I would refer back to experts, but- yeah. All that sort of informs me. But my biggest questions for the animals is what do you need more of? What do you need less of? <clears throat> what would make you comfortable? Mm -hmm. And if, you know, are you interested? And I'll, I'll, I'll convey to them, here's what they're recommending as a treatment. Like if it's surgery, is that something you want to do? Um, how do you feel about all this sort of stuff? So I, I think the greatest thing I can do is be a voice for them and their, their attitude. Um, sometimes animals would be like, I don't want that. I'm done. I'm done. I don't I want that, that third round yeah. of, of chemo or, well, if you think it'll work, I'm willing to try. So I can, and I don't mean to anthropomorphize them. They're not humans. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it, they show me thoughts and feelings. I right. convey that into language. They obviously don't speak English, but they, I, one of the earliest skills I had as a pet, pet communicator as a child was understanding their point of view on things and getting a beat on what's going on with them emotionally. And I think okay. that it informs me a lot about how are they feeling? What do they want? And so on. I love that. Does, so that, does that answer? Does that help? Yeah, anyone? that's so okay. important because as our dogs get old, and I know that's what I deal with right now with Coda, my dog being 11 and, you know, it's just the, oh, they recommend surgery. Oh, I don't want to do surgery. I feel, I feel personally, that's not something that she would want to go through. So mm. I get the whole feeling type thing, but that. That does make sense. And that's great to be able to share with pet parents who might be going through something like that and how to help with their animals. Well, and that. if it makes you feel better, <laughs> nobody calls a pet psychic who isn't already clued into their pets. It's fairly rare that I would find the animals on a very different page than the human. I find humans instincts. They're intuitive enough to want to call someone like me I know they've been probably at a agonizing over the decision, B wanting to do the right thing for the pet and C they're doing a gut check to say what, based on what I know about this wonderful animal who I live with, what would they want? You know, right. so I, so instincts are actually pretty good. I find for most people, but sometimes for me, it's just a point of validation. They exactly. Feel better proceeding. Mm -hmm. Right. Feel better to hear it from somebody else that, and that whole, yes, I'm doing the right thing. And like you said, that mm -hmm. validation when it comes to things like that. Yeah. So, so what about how can animal communication help with a pet's transition? If so, and like, if it can help with that transition, how does it help with that transition? Well, that makes I'm sense. pretty, it, it makes complete sense. I deal with this a lot and I, I will tell, say this on this podcast, as I've shared with you as well. When we're at those end of life situations, um, I am happy to get on a call, a uh, Zoom call, get on the phone, whatever, to talk to the owner to say, where are we? Is this time? Do they want this? Because I also know at the end of life, we have good days, bad days, good days, bad days. And sometimes you feel like, is, is it, is it not it? Um, so I'm happy. And I don't charge for those calls. Just jump in and say, how are they doing? Is this what they want? So I think okay. that's, that helps the transition too, is just understanding timing yes. and when they are done and to help them understand some of the signs that a pet is showing them that they are, they're ready. Um, but I do talk to animals about euthanasia. Like, and I'll, they'll sort of say, what is that? And I offer it as an alternative and I'll, I'll explain the process that it's, you know, it, they, 
but sometimes they'll tell me if they have an option, I can present to them, do you want the vet to come to your home? Are you okay with going to the veterinary office? And I'll explain that it's basically a series of two injections. The first one that makes them fall asleep, the second one that will help them just lift out of their body. Um, and they, they, they're appreciative to have that option. And they're also very quick to tell me, not today, right. or yes, I'm ready. But they know that they have options and that, you know, that it can shorten their suffering. Most animals would go, would go for that. Yeah. And they're always very clear. Yep. It's time or no, it's not time. Um, so I think that easing in the transition and knowing that we're not doing this thing that they don't understand. Right. Where you're like, I have these, do they understand what's happening? Do they know why we're going to the vet? Do they know why I'm talking to them? Do they know why I'm, I'm making them, you know, get, um, you know, subcutaneous fluids. They know why I stick shots in them every day. I feel like I'm hurting them. Do they understand why? Right, exactly. I can help with a lot of those things to just help explain to the animal why we're doing what we're doing, what are their options and help them feel empowered. And um, I can help a pet parent afterwards to make connection. So they know. That was my next question. Yeah, that, that which is the biggest happened, thing, right? Of course, it's that are process they okay? of- <laughs> Do they hate me? Will they forgive me? Do they right. understand? And of course, they always do. They all, once they arrive, they're like, oh, oh boy. And I, I've never met an animal that was mad about it, darling. They're all like, wow, do I feel better? Boy, am I glad to be out of that body. I forgot how uncomfortable I was. It's sort of, that's the point of view they often get me. Oh. Anyway, I, I think you're ready to ask another question. Yeah, no, I can, that I can talk about this for right hours. So. It. No, you're doing, that was leading right into what happens after they pass because, you know, that feeling of, like you were saying, did I do the right thing? Was this mm-hmm. the right time? And is it ever the right time? And how do we know? And yeah, is our dog or is our animals, our pet going to be like, oh, I wasn't ready to go yet. And they're somehow communicating that. And it's so hard for us because here we are, we have to move on mm. and go through that grieving process. Yeah. Yeah. There was a comedian. I don't remember who it was, unfortunately, but he said, as soon as you get a puppy, you start that, that uh, short, uh, I can't remember if it's short, short walk or long walk to misery, meaning you immediately fall in love. You know, they're not going to live long enough. Whenever it is, it'll be too soon. Right. It's just, it's that price of love, right? And that, that price of wanting to do the right thing. But, um, and yet we do it again and again. Why? Cause we, we love do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, even for me as a pet psychic, it's like, it's hard. It's not the same when they're not physically here, but I'm happy to help them connect with an animal once they pass. So they also understand they're, they're just fine. They don't have a body anymore. It's like having an invisible, visible friend around, but they're yeah. alive, they're well, and they're no longer suffering. And that's huge. Right, And that's the big thing. It's just, yeah. you know, if they're in pain and we don't, we don't want that. Um, and I'm a big person and, you know, quality over that, that quantity and giving them mm-hmm. their best life that they can have. I know. Yeah. Is there a time frame after an animal has passed where, um, or does it matter? I mean, if somebody were to reach out to you the day after and chat and see if you can kind of help them through the grieving process, is that too soon? Or is there any type of time frame? or it's just? I think, you know, if psychics, me, psychic mediums who talk to mm-hmm. people in spirit will often recommend give it a period of time. Okay. Yeah. Folks are settling in up there. They're figuring stuff out. Give them a little time. Yeah. Um, I found there is some truth to that with humans. Okay. Um, with animals, not so much. I think because A, they get the life and death cycle in a way that we don't understand. And they also don't have all this sort of religious and other expectations around what death will be. It's right. just a thing for them. Often animals will see other animals in spirit around. Like they'll be able to tell you, you have two pets, one of them's still there. They'll say, oh yes, I've seen the dog. He's been around. Some are there. So often it's not a big deal for them to figure out what's going on. Secondly, they often come home. Like, like well, I guess I'll go home tonight. So literally they'll be hanging around your house in spirit immediately afterwards because they don't really know what else to do. And it's like, well, why don't I do that? There are guides who help animals transition. So they'll be there to support them. But if Sparky says he'd rather go home and go back to his living room and hang around, he'll do that. So often, shortly after they pass, we will see like we had these out of the corner of our, our eye experiences, or we could swear we smelled them or saw them. And people wonder if that's wishful thinking. No. It's often because they're hanging around, 
yep. and they're still relatively close to this plane. So the short answer to that one, because again, I'm going to roll here, um, mm -hmm. that I will tell you if I can't quite feel a connection and I will recommend that we wait if that's the case. Um, but often it, you know, could be a matter of days. I think part of it though, is also your readiness because sometimes people just need to do their morning. They like, I still have to show up for work every day. I'm not ready to have this conversation. I'm just trying to keep it together. So they'll wait till they're emotionally in a better place to have the conversation and not be taken right back to the trauma that had just happened. If that makes sense to you, Darlene. So I really, and I think animals get that too. They don't want to cause us pain. So whatever the right timing feels for you is usually what I go by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. an important part of it too. Right. Yeah. Wow. And what about um, families with multiple pets in the household? When one mm -hmm. pet has passed away, is there communicating with the other pet and finding out the feelings and do they really know everything that's going on? I mean, we know they sense losing kind of their pet sibling in the household. Um, do you do a lot of communication with that way? I do. Yeah. And it depends. Yeah. Um, and I'll explain, I guess, some of the circumstances. I'm yeah. a big, when you direct a thought or an emotion to an animal, whether they are here or whether they have passed, they get mm -hmm. it immediately. They just don't always understand it. Gotcha. So it's helpful to sort of broadcast that message to the other animals around to say that this animal passed or we're going to help this animal pass okay. because it, it, it passed because it also, it, um, eliminate some confusion on their part. I have encountered pets who have been like, what happened? One day they were just gone. Uh, I've have other pets who are like, oh yes, I know they were ill. And in fact, I see them around. Some see animals and spirits, some pets see people in spirit, others don't. Wow. So I sort of have to do a check-in to say, what's their understanding? And I mean to you to explain it. Sometimes they will jump to an incorrect conclusion. Um, like, did I cause their passing or am I, it, it, they'll, they'll project themselves onto it to, or, or could I be next? So I'll have to explain, no, this animal was ill or it happened very quickly and a decision had to be made. And so it, it is helpful to talk to other animals afterwards to find out A, what their understanding is B, and B also answer questions they have because sometimes they're very curious about the process. I saw an animal was like, he saw his, uh, his past partner as this sort of gray shadow and it scared the heck out of him. Wow. And she said, he just seems really anxious and he won't settle. And I said, well, he sees this gray cloud, but he doesn't know what it is. So I explained oh, it to the dog and she subsequently reported that he calmed down considerably. So oh, wow. sort of like humans, our understanding yeah. runs the gamut. Yeah. Well, that's but amazing. it is helpful. The short answer though, again, <laughs> it's helpful. No, to check I love it. Everybody's every doing I, they're pretty good. <laughs> I can listen to you forever. Every time I listen to you, I learn, you know, something new and it just fascinates me. And this is also helpful for just um, pet parents and this journey that we have with our dogs getting old. And yeah, as hard as it is, we're all going to, we're going to lose our pet someday and it's way too soon. And yeah, anything that we can have and use to, to help us with this whole process. So yeah. I always say after an animal has transitioned, leave the toys out, leave the bed okay. there, yeah. talk to them, you know, well, I, um, okay. Story time. You ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. Had, a, I got a million of them, but I, I know. And I love one. your stories and I know our listeners will love your stories too. So. <laughs> well, it, it was, it's a really, it was a really cool one. This is a woman who's local to me. She came into my office and, um, I knew she wanted to communicate to a pet but I wasn't sure of the circumstances. I don't, I, when people come to my office, I actually, I do ask them to bring that picture with them. So sometimes I don't have any advance notice, but okay. I said, this is going to sound really weird to you, but there's a horse standing behind you in my mind's eye. I see him and he's got scrubs on, like he works in a hospital. He's got the mask. He's got something covering his ears. And he's got these sort of green scrubs. I said, I know it's going to sound crazy, but does this make any sense to you? And she started laughing. I said, where do you work? And she goes, I work at New Bolton Center. New Bolton Center is University of Pennsylvania's large animal um, veterinary office. It's just right near here. It's quite well known. Um, mm -hmm. But at any rate, and I said, he's showing me. And I said, so we have this horse and spirit. Do you know this horse? She's, and she, of course she starts crying. She goes, I do. And I said, he follows you around to work because he was always curious what you do. So I see him literally going through doors. If you're going into surgery, follows in, he's got his scrubs on, so to speak, and he's watching you. He's seeing all the things you used to do when you would go home and do your thing. Cause now we can. Wow. 
and he's found it very interesting. And he shared some observations about what he saw and why. And um, that's the interesting thing, of course, when you don't have a body anymore, it gives you a lot of freedom. So I say, leave things out, keep talking to them. All right, buddy, we're going to work today. I know you couldn't come to work with me before because you were too ill, but once you get in the car, come with me, come with me. But they enjoy that. They enjoy continuing to engage with them. Even if you feel like you're crazy and you're talking to yourself, (laughs) they're getting the message, getting the message. And they appreciate them because it it helps them stay anchored in the life they know as well. And Darlene, another thing to add on that is you're not keeping them here. I don't want anyone listening to this to think that by continuing to communicate, we'll be keeping them from ascending to heaven. They are there. They also have guides and guardian angels who are with them. And they realize it's a process of them getting settled in um, and that it's helpful. It's helpful to know that the people who love them still know that they're alive and well. It's comforting for them. So it makes sense because it's so hard to lose that routine and that daily life we have, especially, you know, going for walks and things like that. And if, yeah, I, see how that could be helpful when we're including them in that daily routine, even though they're not physically there. And it's comforting for you. Yeah. It's comforting for them. Uh, To me, it's a kind of a win-win. And that's what we need. We need anything that we can get to help. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Anything during this time. (laughs) So true. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, this is great. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us? This is absolutely wonderful. Um, yes, particularly with regard to this idea of an animal who's ill and it's towards the end and we're all weepy, right? Because yes. we are, because yes. we love them. Yes. And you know me, um, I have my days these days and it's, we, and yeah. <laughs> we all do. We all do look for signs after they transition. Um, okay. my cat custard was a male flame point Siamese who died tra- tragically. He got, he was an indoor cat. He got out and literally within two hours, he was hit by a car. Oh. Um, and he had a following on Facebook. I'm telling you, I post one picture of custard and everyone would come out of the woodwork and like that picture. Um, so it was a really, it was, it was a tragic loss. Um, and two days later, my husband is driving down route one, which is near where we live here in Pennsylvania and a car. And oh, I should add his name was custard. Tom thought it was undignified name for a male cat. So he used to call him Mr. Custard or Mr. Cuss. Well, a card puts on its turning signal, gets in front of him. It's a Jeep with a wheel cover that says life is good. You're familiar with that company. Yep. And, that, that. Mm-hmm. and the license plate says Mr. Cuss, M-R-C-U-S. Oh two days later he took a picture of it i could send it to you it's rather blurry because he's taking he's, he's taking right. a picture when he shouldn't be in a moving vehicle but he's like you're not gonna believe this so look for those signs those hellos from heaven okay. um they'll find a way to get through and the second thing is something i heard from my cat pearl after she passed she we had a little conversation about it and she said don't apologize when you're giving medicine don't apologize when you're doing things, even if they might be uncomfortable, but she's saying, cause it's confusing. Cause on one hand, you're saying you need this on the other hand, you're saying like, you shouldn't be doing it. So she's like, just be confident and explain. And I really took that. Like, I'm not trying to hurt you, buddy. Here's where we're doing this. And she's, and on the other thing with Pearl said, so smile through your tears, let them know it's okay to go. They understand your tears but they're conflicted when they don't know how to make you feel better. So she goes, if you can smile through your tears, that helps. Okay. So, and it's hard, right? Oh yeah. (laughs) It's also okay to talk up the afterlife. You're going to not going to have any more aches and pains. You're going to feel good when you're ready. If you want my help, let me know I'm here, but, but, but I'm, but take a a note from a dog's playbook. And that is enjoy the day. You're still here. I'm going to smile through my tears and we're going to make it the best day ever, ever. Our, our, it's hard not to put our emotions out there, but I think it puts them in conflict about a situation they can't fix, which is how we feel. So we right. kind of have to rise to the occasion as if they were our children, which they are and yeah. say, okay, I'm here with you, buddy. And you're going to be okay. And I'm going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And that gives them a lot of peace of mind as they move forward. Oh, I love that. That makes sense. And yes, we have to live our lives like our dogs. Let's live each day, each moment, each second to the fullest because yeah. that, that's how they are. Oh, yep. wow. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Lori. It was my so pleasure great always you here today. I appreciate talking with you. And so how about for our listeners, let everyone know how they could be in touch with you or where they can find you. 
uh, and I'd love to hear from them. So um, my name is my website, basically. So it's laurieblomer.com, L-A-U-R-I-E, and the last name is B-L-O-M-E-R, and you pronounced it right. Thank you, Darlene. You're welcome. So laurieblomer.com. <laughs> I have a contact me option through that. Um, I also have an Instagram page, Laurie Blomer Psychic. And on Facebook, it's Laurie Blomer Psychic channel animal communicator it's long but you'll find me there and my email address is laurie bloomer psychic at gmail uh, i have to tell you in the interest of full disclosure i live in this adorable little town in southeastern pennsylvania with lousy lousy cell signal so i always encourage people to con- if you can contact me by way of email or even text me that's probably better than a phone call because sometimes i have to drive some distance to get to a place oh, where wow I, I know it's crazy it's crazy <laughs> Um, but it just means I can respond more quickly. And also because I'm sort of a one woman show, sometimes I respond to emails after hours. So that way I'm giving you all the information you need without bugging you by calling you at 1030 at night. So uh, at any rate, I'd uh, love to hear from anyone. And I, again, all things on animals, I really enjoy doing. So um, the one other thing I will say is if it's an aspect of my work that I don't do, I have a network of great and talented friends so it's not unusual, for example, to, to for someone to contact me and me say, I have a friend who's actually better at that. Okay. So um, our our concern as a group is always getting people in the right hands. So just okay. know if I refer you to somebody else, it's not because I don't want to help you. It's because I know somebody who might do something better than I do. And that's the biggest concern to me is you get the help you need. Okay, awesome. Although I kind of do it all, to be honest with you. But still, <laughs> best hands are important to me. You're busy. You're busy. That's awesome. Oh. oh, well, thank you so much for being here. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Always a joy. Yes, Great well. to know you. Yeah. Thank you, Darlene. Again, very yeah. excited to be part of this. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for being a part of One Less Network. And we're really excited about this, too. So you have an awesome day, Laurie. You, too. Thank Give you. Code a Pat for me. I sure will. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. My curiosity was piqued after editing this episode, and I booked a reading with Lori. She told me that Bella and I have been together before, that, to keep a long story short, she is my sacred bear, and we are meant to keep finding each other. We spoke at length about Bella, what she needs from me, and whether Shep is a constant presence in my life. You're not likely surprised to hear that he is. And he has offered to help Bella navigate my world. But she told him, I got this. I've been here before. Now I'll admit, I'm a skeptic. My initial plan was to keep this podcast pretty straight, talking about grief and related research, and not veering too far into the spiritual. Because we stand the chance of bringing in new listeners who want more topics like that, but we also stand the chance of alienating those who don't adhere to the more mystical thought processes. After listening to Darlene and Lori, though, I realized one thing. Lori provides comfort in a judgment-free space, and that's first and foremost what pet parents need to navigate their grief journey. It doesn't work for everyone, and that's okay, because everyone's grief journey looks different. In our next episode, launching on October 15th, We go back to digging into research, particularly the research of Donna Wilson, a nursing professor at University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada. She recently completed a research study on grief and how humor can be both a grief trigger and a healing or coping mechanism. I'm really excited to bring you that episode. I'm Angela Schneider, owner of Big White Dog Photography in Spokane, Washington, and your host at One Last Network signing off to go get some Bella Snuggles. Listen to One Last Network on whichever podcast platform you prefer. We're on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Music, and Amazon Music. Don't forget to hit follow or subscribe so you don't miss an episode. If you have a friend who might be interested in our content, make sure you share us with them. Thanks for listening.